Hi, welcome back to RetroAxis. In this episode, we're going to do a deeper dive of the Atari VCS experience. Uh, last night, I had the opportunity to begin working with the system. And as I mentioned, I wasn't necessarily certain if I was gonna like this system or not. Uh, and I'm still not 100% certain uh, how I feel about the system. But what I thought I would do today is tell you a little bit more about what's inside the box, uh, what the out-of-box setup experience was like. Uh, and we'll take a look at some of the features uh, of the machine and we'll talk a bit about that. Uh, so firstly, this is the Onyx edition. Uh, so um, if you look and see what's actually in the box, you get a system, a power supply, and a standard HDMI cable, uh, which I have here. This is the actual set-top box itself. So this is, again, the Onyx edition, which has a black faceplate. The uh, collector's edition, which I also purchased, has a wood faceplate, which is, you know, kind of neat. Um, these have 8 gigs of RAM. They run an AMD processor. This, so this is the 800 model of the VCS. Uh, on the rear panel, um, it has USB 3.0 ports. It has a HDMI output, an Ethernet port, the uh, power supply where the AC adapter, which is external, uh, plugs in here, and a power button. Uh, now, what I really like about this machine is, is really how thin it is. They really did a nice job of streamlining the device. Uh, and because the power supply is external, uh, they, I think they were able to squeeze a little bit more um, into this in a, a smaller form factor. And what's great is you can set it down. I've got it here right on top uh, of this uh, entertainment center. And you can see it doesn't even block the TV. It's actually below the frame of the TV. And that's actually a really nice feature, and I really appreciate that. Uh, no, as noted, you know, these do not come with controllers, so you do have some controller options which you can purchase. This is a traditional Atari classic style controller. Now it's a modernized version of that, and I'll talk a bit more about some of the unique features. And this is an Xbox 360 style uh, remote. Now these are both uh, Bluetooth capable, so they actually can work both with the Atari VCS as well as other devices that support Bluetooth. I believe on the system it has an Xbox or PC mode. Um, and then also, uh, they, they also plug in with uh, USB. Um, and those, those were cool because it, it allows you to go directly into the system and they're rechargeable. So there's no batteries on here that you need to take out or remove. You simply plug them in and recharge them and that's a really nice feature as well. So in just a second, I'm gonna walk you through a bit more about the actual system itself and I'll talk to you more about the setup. So let's dive in deeper. So when I first powered on the Atari VCS, it did ask me for uh, a couple of things. First, it wanted to update itself. I had it plugged into an ethernet port, which made it super simple. It just grabbed a DHCP address and began the process of updating itself. It did that about three times. And I think for me, I was getting a little nervous that it was stuck in a loop, but eventually it did get to a screen where it started the, the initial setup. So it asked me for the language um, and then began the process of, of asking a few other startup questions. Not too many, relatively a painless process. Uh, I will say that pairing the remotes has been sort of a challenge. Um, it seems like each time I turn the unit on, I have to go through some weird process to get the remotes to sync up. Maybe that'll get corrected in a future update, but uh, I'll continue tracking that. So firstly, let me power the unit on here uh, using the power button in the back. Um, so the Atari is going to start up now. Um, and as it comes up, uh, you'll see it's going to produce a logo and it's going to actually start a little nice animation of Asteroids. Kind of, kind of a nice touch uh, for a Linux boot screen. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, so here it's loading up. I'm also going to turn on the classical joystick remote as well by pressing the Atari button here. And you can see this little bit of like lighting up around the edge here. And that's actually really cool. It kind of shows you what direction you're going. Um, it's still pairing. You can see it's blinking. So it hasn't actually fully paired with the system. And this is one of the things that I find a little irritating is that every time you turn the system on, it seems like it doesn't pair straight away. Uh, but here it has actually paired. So I'm able to actually log in. So doing that, it wants me to enter uh, my PIN number. So I will, I will do that uh, here and get myself logged in. Okay, so my PIN has been entered. I'll click next and uh, here we're logging in. So now it's setting up my dashboard uh, once again. Um, so here we can see I've got a, a menu. It looks uh, you know, pretty straightforward. It's not terribly difficult. These huge boxes here, 
I only have a few things installed, so I don't know if the boxes will shrink and it will adjust the size accordingly. But uh, as of right now, this isn't a huge big deal. But this is the master home screen. You can see you have a menu here of games, app, store, system. So you can actually go across and select different items. Now, the one thing I was a little, uh, and, oh, excuse me, my internet connection is disabled. As I mentioned, I had it previously set up on uh, Ethernet, so I will go back and set it up again for the Wi-Fi and test the Wi-Fi. I haven't done that yet. Uh, but here you can see, you know, general settings. Uh, you can, uh, you know, change this. This is a 4K screen, so we can try 4K mode. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, and so it should reload here in just a second. Hear the fan firing up. Here we go. Hmm. I wonder if it actually rebooted to do that. Sure did. Actually, my remote went off. So that's kind of a strange thing. Just to change resolution, it has to do a full reboot. So logging in with the pin a second go around. Now let's see if it's actually changed the resolution. Yep. So here we are, Ultra HD. So it, it did work. It did actually change the resolution. A little odd that it had to reboot. So that's kind of a, a quirk. Um, but let's see. Uh, other things, devices. Um, you can see wireless Bluetooth is turned on for your, for your remotes. Um, these are the current devices that are connected up. We can turn on this remote. Let's see if it pairs automatically. Again, as I mentioned, it seems like for some reason, every time I start the system up, these things don't quite pair properly. So we'll see if that one uh, connects. Um, but in the meantime, uh, just showing you can pair new controllers, you can update the controllers. So the controllers also have their own firmware, which you have to update and keep updated. Um, this one's been updated to the latest version already. Uh, and then storage. Um, so there's plenty of storage here. You can see 23 gigabytes free. Uh, what I'm going to do here in a few minutes as well is we're also going to install some uh, alternative operating systems. So I prepared a few of these on flash disks. So we'll test that feature out as well. So uh, I went ahead and connected to Wi-Fi and I want to show you the store. So this is the Atari VCS store that's uh, built into the console. Um, and I'm a little disappointed currently in the size of the catalog. You would think that after two and a half years of development, they would have had a lot more to choose from. And I realize that, you know, launching a console is probably not something that's very easy to do. I'm certain it's very difficult. But I would say that having only, you know, 15 items, one being one they included, the Atari VCS Vault, with the console is not terribly compelling. Uh, in fact, some of these, you know, you look at GunTech as an example, and you say, wow, that's $25 for that. I wonder if that's even worth it. And you have Boulder Dash Deluxe. I mean, they're asking $15 for that. Um, you know, again, I don't know if those prices are reasonable. I haven't, I certainly haven't tried to buy anything on here yet. Uh, I simply launched the built-in VCS Vault and also downloaded uh, the Missile Command Recharge and Unsung Warriors games, which were free in the store. But let's take a quick look at the Missile Command game. Uh, now, what I like about this particular joystick is you've got, you know, the, the old school style joystick. But if you remember from the original Atari days, you also had the paddle controllers. And those paddle controllers allowed you to play games like Breakout or other games that allowed you to use, um, you know, a dial. Uh, with this, actually, the stick here also functions as that paddle, which is actually a really cool feature. So I like the way that they combine the retro style of the functionality into a single unit. You also have a back button back here for a second uh, button. So you have your A, your B, and you have a back button and a menu button on this on this control. Uh, so let's start by playing Missile Command Recharge. Now a moment ago I launched this title and had an issue with this control. It wasn't able to actually move uh, correctly. So let's see if, if maybe restarting it fixed it. Uh, I can press A to fire. You see my targets over here and it's not letting me move left or right, which is really weird. I, I can see that it, you know, it's just not doing it. And that's, that's a little strange. I don't know if it's because this game maybe doesn't work correctly with this controller. Maybe it only works with the modern controller and that's a possibility, but nowhere did it say that in the, <laughs> in the console that this game only worked. I didn't get a pop-up about it, nothing. So it's a little odd that this controller doesn't work. So let's go ahead and, and quit out of this and let's actually set up the other uh, controller. Now, uh, one thing I do actually also like, and this is sort of a, yeah, this isn't a big deal, but you know, 
I actually am a big fan of having Velcro ties on all of my cords. They actually shipped it with, this cord actually came with a Velcro tie. So that's a small little detail, but that's something that I actually, I actually appreciate. So let's go ahead and plug this remote in uh, and I'll show you have USB uh, ports right here on the front and they give you a really nice, generous amount of cable which is great. This thing can reach, you know, pretty far. This is probably about, you know, maybe a 10 foot cable or so. Uh, but let's go ahead and plug that in. And it's nice the way that it fits into the back of the control here as well. You can see that it, it fits in, in a nice molded area and it's like it belongs there. And here's your Velcro tie nicely there. Now you can see this controller is now activated. Uh, so it's not connected with Bluetooth. It's connected via USB, um, which is great. Um, I have noticed initially with the, uh, the original joystick controller some lag, um, which was a little disappointing to get some lag here and there. Maybe future updates will correct that too. To turn off your remote, you simply hold in the Atari button and the remote will power itself off. So now I know I only have a one player uh, connected, not a two player, so the game won't be confused. So let's go ahead and relaunch Missile Command and see if it makes any difference. All right, so starting it up, let's see. That's definitely better. It definitely works as expected, but a little strange that you weren't told that either the other remote didn't work or perhaps there's an issue with that. So that's a little strange. All right, so now I'm actually gonna switch back uh, to the Atari VCS Vault. I'm gonna switch back to the paddle controller also. Um, so let me turn off this, in fact, I'll just unplug this remote and it should go right off. And I'll plug this one in this time. Uh, actually, you know, I'm gonna stick with the Bluetooth mode on this. Um, so I'm gonna turn this remote back on. Um, yeah, it's connected up. All right, so let's load the Atari VCS Vault. I wanna demonstrate the paddle mode of this, of this remote, which I think is really, a really nice feature and it works actually remarkably well um, considering how it's designed in. So let's go ahead and launch um, you know, let's play Tempest, actually. That's a great game. Um, let's launch that. And there's Tempest. And one player mode, we'll go ahead and just press this button down here. Start one player. And we'll just start at the beginning. But here, instead, I, I, can, I can move this around, but it, if you see, you just simply twist this, just like a paddle. Anyway, really fun to play it like that instead of having to you know, use a stick. It, it works remarkably well. So another thing I'd like to test is hooking up a USB keyboard and mouse to this system. Um, I, do, I haven't done this yet, so you're gonna watch me do this for the first time and we're gonna see what happens. Um, but as you can see, if you, if you go up to the apps section, um, there's an opportunity here to test Chrome. Uh, I've also been told that the Atari VCS Companion is an app you install on a uh, smartphone that allows you to do similar things like have a virtual keyboard and remotely control the VCS. I didn't really bother to install that because I think, you know, practically speaking, if I'm going to use this in any sort of capacity, uh, I would rather have, you know, it be like a full machine that's, that's fully usable. So I'm going to demonstrate this right here. I'm going to launch into Chrome and we'll see if we can browse the web using a, uh, a keyboard and mouse. This is just a standard Lenovo branded uh, USB keyboard, nothing uh, terribly fancy, no specialty keys, just a Lenovo keyboard. So let's plug it in, see what happens. Uh, here's the actual USB receiver. I'll go ahead and leave this cord plugged in for the remote. There's no remote currently plugged into the other end of this. It's just the extension cable. Plug that into the front here. And let's see if anything happens. I can actually control it with the, with the arrow keys. Let's hit enter. Here's Chrome. mouse here see if that there's a mouse so you can see a mouse here on the screen so uh, scroll wheel works as expected and let's try and browse to a web page ah the retro access web page oh boy is that talk about in 4k <laughs> That's tiny. Let's go ahead and zoom that in. There we go. So that works. All right, great. 
Okay, so we do know we have a mouse cursor and, and, uh, and the ability to use the keyboard, so that's really cool. So let's go ahead and close this out. So this is day one with the Atari VCS, just kind of running you through very quickly some of the features, some of the things I liked and didn't like about the system. So really in summary, you know, overall, you know, the packaging was really nice. I did appreciate a few uh, little things in here. As an example, when you first open up the box, you can see, you know, the Asteroids logo, uh, you know, with the Atari VCS here. And then the quick start was right here. Uh, one thing of note, there was not a manual included with this. So no manual, no like quick start poster, nothing like that. Everything is just here printed on the box. And for the most part, setup is pretty self-explanatory, so it's not terribly difficult to get up and running. A couple of things I did that did bother me during the initial setup, uh, when you're presented with a virtual keyboard to enter some information, for example, your email address, uh, one thing that did happen to me is uh, the response of that input was a little off. Sometimes it staggered or stuttered. So when you would go to press the button, it was delayed and it didn't quite move. And then other times as you were trying to select the exact letter it would shoot across and skip and so that was a little weird and i found that a little irritating as i was just getting set up and now since i've updated the controllers um you know using the uh, usb cable that hasn't happened again so i don't know if it was a firmware thing uh, with the controllers or what but that problem seems to have mostly gone away i haven't really replicated it since so that's good um, I also really like, again, I mentioned, they give you this really generous length of USB. I mean, very rarely nowadays do you get a USB cable that's longer than, you know, a couple of feet. Uh, but this is about 10 feet of cable. I don't know what that is in meters, but, uh, you know, it's a really nice sized cable, uh, including the Velcro strap. And to me, that's always a nice touch. I always put Velcro straps in all of my cables. Um, so having one included was, a, was certainly a bonus for me. Um, other things I really liked, again, this, this particular joystick uh, remote, really like this guy. The fact that they combined the paddle functionality into the stick um, and that this is digital. If you remember Atari 2600 remotes over time, those things were squeaking. If you ever looked inside of one of those, they were really just four buttons. So click, 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 click. Um, but this is a full on digital uh, joystick so it gives you the full 360 degrees of motion and when you and when you're using the remote too uh, which I always which I like it lights up in those directions so you can see that the joystick actually lights in those directions which is really really cool I think that's a really nice touch also um, they give you an A button and then of course you have a back button here here's your molded USB port uh, you've got your Atari button which takes you back to the menu a back button and a menu button. So really well laid out, well designed, really brings you back to the original Atari 2600, but gives you that nice enhancement of a modern feel of that digitized version with the combined uh, paddle piece. And that's just fantastic. Now, again, the Xbox 360 style controller, you know, really nothing terribly exciting about this. It's just a standard, you know, controller, obviously designed to work with the Atari. Um, so it has, you know, of course, the Atari logo inside of it. Uh, again, the molded USB um, port here, which is, which is a nice touch as well. So overall, the build quality of this feels pretty good. So I am relatively happy with the build quality. Um, so apart from that, that's it for really this particular day one of the Atari VCS experience. Uh, what I'm going to do next is go into PC mode. We're going to explore uh, a couple different operating systems and see if they install, if they run. Uh, we'll use a USB keyboard and mouse for that as well. So we'll get that connected up and we will uh, dive into that in the next episode. So be sure to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you liked this video. Give me some of your thoughts down in the comments below and we will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.